Hi, you guys. Hello, senoritas. Nice to see you. It's been a long week. Nice to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you guys, too. Yeah, it's funny when it feels like a long week and we're only a few days in. And uh, to everybody so listening, to it's nice to be heard as well, might I Yeah. Add. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out on 90s Now. On every single possible social media platform, we're there. Anywhere you could possibly stream a show, a uh, yeah, we're there. You know that because you found us. So thank you for doing that. Um, Sharon, because you brought it up, I would like to give one of the surprises away. Oh my, Kelly's yeah. got surprises, presents, Whoa. really. Yeah, presents for you and Adam. So um, to our audio listeners, um, I'm not sure if you know this because maybe you don't watch us yet on the YouTube channel. P.S. You should. Um, <laughs> Sharon and I did an, an impromptu uh, live stream on Saturday. And so it was amazing. It was very fun. And we had lots of people tune in, which we appreciate. And we were having fun because we didn't curse live on the air as our radio wow. kicked in. And, and I got love a cursing. <laughs> got a message following the live stream from Ginger Bear. Oh, he's a, back. A triumphant return, our friend from New Zealand. And he writes simply, I can't believe I missed this. Oh, that means we'll have to do another one. That's it. And then Adam, he has left a, a message on our last episode of 90s Now, which was episode 41. And Am I less says, pretty than I was before? Is that what he said? Well, let's see. He says, bing bong, Ginger Bear is back and ready to be your daddy bush. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> ready to be your daddy bush? Is that oh, talked of course. Him? Yes. There we go. Well, he if says, you missed that show, go listen to it back. He says that uh, he he listened to it. Yeah, and he says, "Sorry, I've been off the grid for a couple of weeks." Gorgeous as always, Kelly and Sharon and Adam. Kiwi Aww. love and hugs to you all. And then he put the uh, New Zealand flag with um, heart faces and a Canadian flag. Right, big hit you. <laughs> <laughs> big. So that was listener mail. I just wanted to surprise because I know we haven't heard from Ginger Bear in a while, and we always appreciate when people take uh, a, a, you know time to send us a message. So thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for the prezies, Kel. You're welcome. And I should mention just before you take all over, Sharon, that youtube.com slash Kelly Alexander show is where you can stream the uh, live stream that you may have missed and also watch the current episodes of 90s now. Well, well, well. We're going to have to, uh, we're having fun so far, but we will be uh, pushing in a bit of a dark cloud on the show today. There's always a dark cloud. There's so always a dark cloud, but you know what? There's always a silver lining. There's always a rainbow over there. Mm -hmm. Also true. Don't throw up too much <laughs> the idea of what i'm just saying <laughs> she made me sick uh <laughs> we've got a few things to tackle today not the least of which is uh a pretty heavy year for for celebrity loss so we'll talk a little bit about that we've got uh movie reflections with uh one of the greats on one of the greats and how the great that directed it almost passed it off to another great it's great it's a great story. That was confusing. <laughs> I know. Me too. I said it and I'm confused. Um, you got Kelly's trivia as usual. Uh, 90s rewind that'll take us back to the halfway mark to our favorite decade. And uh, there may be a short list of actors who could actually get a yes to filming something in Westminster Abbey. And we can tell you at least one of them. So I thought that we should probably start there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Tom Cruise. Thank you for listening. Bye, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Tom Cruise got the go-ahead to film parts of Mission Impossible 8. Sidebar, 8? There's been that many Mission Impossibles? Didn't it start in 96? Adam, could you double-check that? I'm pretty sure it was... Because uh, that was the Adam Clayton and um, the Edge version, wasn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, while we're trying to... CD single. Well, well, well. <laughs> Yeah, so Mission Impossible, the first one was in 1996. We are. Wow. Adam was two. <laughs> and Kelly's <laughs> talking about uh, yeah. CD singles. Do you remember mini discs? Like, weren't yes. there little ones? I have, I have. It's funny, I was doing a cleanup a few months ago and I saw my mini disc player and my mini disc, and I'm like, you are not getting rid of these. And I put them back. <laughs> so, I don't think I've ever, so I've, I've never had a mini disc. They're cutesy, Adam. And I've more never stable. Seen it with my own eyes. More stable than a CD. Huh. So are you talking about the mini disc that was housed in like plastic and it had like an opening slider? Yeah, thing? like I because as a recording device, or are you talking actual mini disc? I, there were actual mini. Small oh, I think discs. I only might, might have one of those, maybe one or two. 
because if you look at a CD player, which is artifactual at this point, uh, the way the tray is when it pops out, there's like there's like the main, and then there's like a sub. Really, slight, slight, like like it's slightly lower, so a smaller disc would fit in that. Can I go circle. check in the computer right next to me? I'll be right back. I've never seen it. Do it. I'll be right back. History in action. There's Teaching a lesson Adam happening and- here. <laughs> Adam, we can give you play by play. Adam has yeah. run across the room in the studio where he's working. It seems to be a beautiful day where he is because the <laughs> sun is coming through the window. Uh, he may have fallen down because he's not in the shot anymore. <laughs> I do hope he's okay. That was great, Sharon. You should be a play by play announcer for our soccer team. Thank you. I'm going to tie in uh, a sports play by play with the story that we're talking about with Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. What'd you think, Adam? You're back. I think the computers are too recent. Uh oh. There's no little slide for a Wait, small CD. And you know what? It's okay because okay. they're they didn't last. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'll see one one day. If you have one, you may be using it as a coaster for your cup right now. I love that idea. Now, for Tom Cruise to have uh, gotten the go ahead to film parts of Mission Impossible Eight inside Westminster Abbey, it's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they they basically tend to say no to mostly everyone. Um, but an inside source whose name I don't know, uh, <laughs> whose name we won't say mostly because we don't know it, said that it's nothing but the biggest and the best that'll do for Tom Cruise when he's making his movies. So when he wanted to film inside a church for the new Mission Impossible film, it had to be Westminster Abbey. They turned down almost every request. So it's an incredible nod to Tom and to the production team to have uh, been given the go ahead for this. I have a theory. What's your theory? Do you know where Tom Cruise was this past Sunday? Yes, I do. Wimbledon. Yeah. And not not only was he at Wimbledon, he was in the royal, like. The box. The The box. box. Oh, yeah. Right where William and Kate a cake kate and <laughs> little george were so maybe that's where he got the um the 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 royal permission i'm sure that's part of it that's the that's the best way to schmooze when you're tom cruise is go and be amongst them you know they are, they are buds when they did the uh i think we talked about this on the show several weeks ago when they did the top gun premiere apparently kate and william got to see it first of course wow. they did they're mm. the first couple now yep. um I will say this as a side note that has nothing to do with why he was given the go ahead. He wasn't having a good hair day at Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're right. You're right. And it didn't look particularly breezy, though. It, maybe he drove there with the windows open. <laughs> maybe he's still getting over his 60th birthday bash. It's a bit unsettling to see that Tom Cruise is 60 is like, I don't know. I don't know why that is shocking to me. It's a mind game. It is a mind game. And if, if I'm getting closer to that, which I'm not, by the way, um, (laughs) (laughs) then we'll have to start changing numbers around. Uh, so we'll keep you posted with details about Tom Cruise and mission impossible eight, but, uh, that means we'll get a sneak peek into Westminster Abbey since I have never been there myself. And just another, uh, circle around to the Royal couple. That's where they got married on April 29th, I believe 2011. Cool. 2011. Isn't that bananas like it's bonkers that's it's not it's bonkers that little prince george is not so little isn't he eight or nine now at, at least, least nine soon is at he? least that i think he turns nine at the end of the month right like june july 22nd or something and i sort of thought the poor kid's in a suit he's at wimbledon in a suit there does he ever get to go to casual affairs yeah. imagine if he was in a little sweater set a little sweater set a little polo oh my god he's <laughs> gonna be shirt. nine in ten days he's gonna be nine yeah, his birthday is July 22nd, 20 second. That's creepy great. Is it that he's going I knew into that. grade three then. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a suit. Yeah. yeah. Adam's I think wearing he has a sweatshirt right now. He has many yeah. suits. <laughs> Remember when, when um, President Obama met him and he was in his little robe? Oh. You remember? Do you remember that picture? I don't. You'll have to Google it. So there's a picture of when uh, Obama. I guess went to the, you know, wherever Buckingham Palace or whatever it was or Kensington. Yeah. They brought, out, they brought out little Prince George and he was in his like nightgown. And oh, so like, not... I think he had like little pajamas on, but his like robe. It was so, so it wasn't Obama that was in his little robe. No. <laughs> it's a different meeting, I guess. In uh, George's defense, his robe does look a lot cooler than all the robes I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. 
They but probably does his have, have a robe maker. Does his have uh, the car from Cars on it? Imagine. I wish it had. Oh my! It probably God. has a polo pony. Let's be honest. That's true. His own. Yeah. <sighs> Lucky kid, but he has to wear suits to tennis matches. So yeah, I guess there's some gives somewhere. And he does have that burden of becoming king and all. Oh, rule of the country. <laughs> <laughs> now that boris johnson has decided to not be a part of that process anymore it'll be all george all the time i did you appreciate boris johnson's portmanteau which was what again bojo that's what he got called. nice because that's how my better half refers to him because she's from ireland right so like they all have that discussion she's like oh bojo this and bojo that i'm like who <laughs> <laughs> Bojo also looks like he's uh, driving to work with the windows down. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like he and Tom Cruise share the same hairstylist. Yeah, the hairstylist. And by stylist, means, I mean there's none. <laughs> you take your, your left or right hand yeah. and drag it over your head. Yeah. And go. <laughs> Sans gel. Sans gel. Do you remember the pink Depp gel, Sharon? Uh, yeah, totally. My sister used to have that bad boy. Depp and it it smelled kind of good like yeah. <laughs> food good which is gross because you're like do i want to taste this <laughs> i never did taste it but it was like weird when stuff that you shouldn't eat tastes like stuff you should you you're right know? not good i mean <laughs> somebody yeah, i want you... i want rachel who's listening from australia to google that because i'm not sure if they had pink Depp hair gel in australia they might have had dippity do <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly oh i just found it. wow adam actually if there was a way to find some deb hair gel i would buy that for you because do you use the gel i feel like you do um the hair gel yeah, yeah. Uh, no i use a hair um hair um it's not gel it's um it foam? It's like a serum no in french you say la pâte. la pâte. Like, oh, powder. Powder. Paste. no not powder um paste, paste. Paste. There we go. Yeah, I only okay. had pasta in mind, and I knew that wasn't the right answer. Don't so put yeah, pasta hair, in your hair. Please don't no. put pasta in your head. <laughs> Justin Timberlake did it. We've we've all seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We have uh, moved that big mission impossible, which we should call permission possible. Yeah. Uh, I know it's awful. <laughs> Check mark on that subject, and on we go. Kel, you ready for trivia? Yeah. I am. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> now, t -t 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 trivia. Bing bong. Bing bong. Um, last circle around to Tom Cruise, just so you know, you do have a wait in front of you before MI8. I believe it's June or July of 2024. Wow. I mean, we waited for Top Gun, right? Right. So there's a wait. That's oh, true. by the way, there's also potential. I've heard rumors. I've heard clickbait stuff. Not sure if it's it's true yet. I hate they haven't the clickbait. Announced it. Top Gun 3. We'll see. Cool. Oh, that, you know what? It made sense. Have you seen it yet, you guys? No, I want Not to. Yet. It's uh, you leave thinking that anything's possible. Honestly, and like it, it really sets it up for other things to happen. Okay, so cool. I wouldn't be surprised. So we'll start with a sporting question. Oh, um, good. And uh, we did uh, one last week on in honor of Wimbledon, and so now we're going to talk about um. I don't think anyone's going to know this one, but anyways, we'll try. Actually, I'm going to move to a basketball one. Here's, here's fun. No, do the other one. You want it? All right, here we go. In which what, sport? What's it about? Oh, that's the uh, Winter Olympics. Uh-oh. You asked for it, Adam. Okay, go ahead. In which sport did Tony <laughs> Nieminen win a gold medal at the 1992 Winter Olympics? He sounds like a hockey player, but I guess. First of all, I think it's a chick. Tony oh. with an I. Tony. Oh, maybe. Where's she from? Sorry. They did not say, but I feel like it sounds, I could be completely wrong, but I feel like it's a Nordic country, Nieminen. Adam. That's the name of the country. That's her last name. I'll go for Adam. Go Adam. <laughs> and I will say um, um, skiing, but not the slope style, like the, 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 the running ski kind of thing. How do you the say cross country it? skiing? Cross country skiing is my final answer. Okay, great. No, Adam, uh, Sharon. I'm going to go with uh, telemark skiing. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. What's that? Um, that's one where they shoot the gun at them, isn't it, Sharon? No, it's like when they have, uh, it's like cross-country skiing, but you also go downhill. 
And okay. my guessing, my guessing a skiing category on Adam's skiing answer is like the people on Price is Right that guess one dollar higher than the person <laughs> beside them. <laughs> well, the two of you are super close. What ski is it? Ju- ski jumping. <gasps> oh, nice. That's a scary one. Yeah. I which one is scarier to you? Like the one where they they literally just fly down the mountain like eagles and hope they land. Well, that's scary because I think it would be exciting for like the first half of the slope down until the reality set in that you were flying down a mountain, yeah. prepping to do a jump that you could, you know, die. Right. But is that the jump that she won the gold medal in? Yeah, 1992. Okay, so what's the other like skiing where you go downhill and then there's this huge jump and you make like four flips and twists and everything and then you land because that's, oh, yes. that's, that's, mm, that's also. Yeah, that- that's Isn't that like, that's kind it. of mogul stuff, right? Like mogul when they do the jumping it's or no, no that's um, aerials, aerials, aerials. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't the, think aerials the jump are smaller than those jumps. Yeah. And I don't think aerials were around in 92. Oh, you're right. It's a new discipline. I think you're right. I feel like that came late nineties maybe. Yeah. I think you're right because even the mogul one combined with the jumps with the fancy, you've got to do this and cross your skis when you're doing an inverted flip. Mm-hmm. That was, that's relatively newer also. Right. I'm always like, it looks manageable, but as we've discussed, when Kelly thinks things are manageable, they're not. So (laughs) do not do it. Do not do it. So this is under the hobbies, toys, and games banner. Mm. Um, Movies recorded on DVDs appeared on the U.S. market for the first time in which year? Sharon. Go Sharon. 1999. Incorrecto. Adam? I would have went for 98. God, the two of you are like, mm, like uh, <laughs> so close. 97. See, we were almost there. Do you have a third we question were... to make us feel better? Yeah. You want, you want a third question to feel better? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. I'll do another, uh, I'll do another hobbies and games one. Ooh, Which toy? Fun. I feel like no one's going to get this, but maybe Adam, Adam has surprised me. So maybe, um, which toy featuring a doll with foam wings had to be recalled because it caused too many injuries. And I will tell you that I don't remember this uh, chaos that happened, this situation. So it's a doll with foam wings? Which toy featuring a doll with foam wings had to be recalled because it caused too many injuries? Hmm. And I have no recollection of this situation. Are you, are you familiar with the answer though? Oh, nope. is it um, like pony something or pony that? My Little Pony? No. no. <laughs> I'm going to guess um, Furby. No. You guessed that the last time. Uh, it's a go-to. No, that was the answer last time. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. But we remember, I was in the clubs when these right. toys were being recalled. <laughs> in her hammer pants. Uh, so yeah. um, full circle, because there's there's a sky in here. Sky dancers. I don't even know what that is. Me neither. I can already hear everybody Googling what sky dancers are. Everybody that's listening to the podcast is Googling right now. I would like to also offer that when I ask for a third question, I want it to be gettable. Got it. (laughs) I know what it is. Here's my third question. Who's saying all I want for Christmas is you? (laughs) Mariah Carey. Where are you? (laughs) Am I the only one who didn't know what what sky dancers were? No, I I had no idea. Okay. You know, it's those things where you launch it and then it's like, it's a doll and foam wings and it goes, poo, and then it, it slowly comes back to the ground. Oh, no wonder that people must have poked their eyes out. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, like, was my explanation clear? Yeah. Yes, it was. I it really like that, that noise. The, Can you the make nineties were dangerous. <laughs> so it goes up in the air and then, and it comes down slowly with the wings. Cool. Yeah. By the way, before we move on. So it wasn't that long ago. It was July 4th, you know, and also July 1st in Canada celebrating our nation's birthdays. And all of a sudden I got a influx, if you will, of, uh, July 4th, um, firework faux pas come to social media. Yes. I am appalled that there are so many people that still think they should buy fireworks (laughs) in a local corner store and Uh. set them off because you're going to die. And here's my uh, anecdote. So I'm watching this comes up on my Instagram. It's in the state somewhere. This lady who like, she's probably, what a lady, she's probably like 20 something. 
And she has her grandma, who is probably 84, 97, something around there. She has her over like a flame thing, trying to light a firework. And you can tell granny doesn't want to be anywhere near this accident waiting to happen. Oh my. Well, the thing lights up. It scares <laughs> granny. She tries to run, uh, trips over herself and falls. Oh my. And then the, the kid, the 20 year old, whatever is like devastated and like runs and tries to pick her up, which she can't do. Of course not. And the person's still filming all of this, by the way. <laughs> I couldn't help. I was filming. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sitting there going, why did you do that to granny? Like <laughs> granny wanted nothing to do with your homemade fireworks. And now you've killed granny. Like, <laughs> granny wants the, granny wants the answers to your questions too. <laughs> yeah. Now granny needs a hip replacement. You know what I mean? so, <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, I think anybody that buys homework, like these, these fireworks from the local corner store, you are asking to blow your fingertips off, like, or your face or like, and somebody just died. I think not long ago, like it went awry and, and almost took out a kid. Yikes. Anyways, that's Kelly's, uh, you know, that was a bit time. soapboxy of, yeah. you know, don't play with firecrackers, kids. Yeah. <laughs> but look it up on Instagram if you want to have a good giggle. <laughs> <laughs> or anyone over like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I have to tell you. <laughs> don't do it, you guys. But if you yeah. want to laugh, go and watch it. <laughs> uh, good times. Um, Hang on a second. I was just making a little note so I won't. About what to go watch on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to point and laugh at Granny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well. No, this is the section where the dark cloud gets pulled in. We'll push it out as uh, at, at the end of it. But it was uh, because of the recent passing of James Kahn that we got to uh, look at a list of um, artists celebrities that have uh, passed in 2022 and uh it's a it's a pretty long list so far it's a so far list which is gross you want other so far lists not you know people that have died but james Kahn, by all uh, accounts and by accounts i mean people that post things on social media was the kind of guy that uh seemed to be unmatched when it came to you know loving a good time loving being with his people and the quality of work that he did sort of was across the spectrum. So we go back to Sonny Corleone uh, in The Godfather, classic. And that's going back, what, like 50 years plus. Um, you've got uh, <laughs> how he was the uh, poor yet captive audience for the unsettled character that Kathy Bates did in Misery. Um, and of course, um, buddy the elf's dad in elf and there's a long list of other um roles that he did and just really made his own and bringing uh quality work to the big screen so may james Kahn rest in peace and we also need to mention the um passing of tony sirico yes well yeah he's on the list too that's what I mean. This list is really long and it includes not just older people that, you know, you have an expectation of maybe not so surprising, but like uh, Tyler Sanders from um, 911 Lone Star was 18 years old. Yeah, crazy. That's awful. Mm -hmm. um, I, have, I have a couple of friends who mentioned that they were really sad to find out about Tony Sirico, uh, Polly Walnuts from The Sopranos. Yeah. Classic. Mm. He just, he managed to take like, as far as being a character actor goes, that he that is a total character. And he was able to sort of translate the approach in a couple other movies similar to his role in The Sopranos, but mm -hmm. that's a character you don't soon forget. Yeah, no, he was, a. Uh, it's funny because he was such a standout character for many reasons, including his like skunk hair. Yeah, <laughs> that he quaffed perfectly. <laughs> oh my God, he probably used that pink death gel, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> probably because it works, that's why. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the name Phil, try and eat it occasionally. The, the name Philip Baker Hall um, may not be super familiar off the top, but this was a guy that played uh, Lieutenant Joe Bookman on uh, on Seinfeld. <laughs> he was a lieutenant, 
uh, anyway, he was 90 years old to see his face, to hear his voice. I think, mm -hmm. you know, exactly who he is. He was also, I believe he was also on modern family as the next door neighbor that, uh, the little boy befriends. Oh, pretty okay. sure that was him. Um, what are we looking at? It's a long list, like I say, but you know, stay, uh, stay safe, everybody. We don't want the list to get even longer. Jim Seals, that's a star from the seventies, mm -hmm. uh, Seals and Crofts. Um, Rapper Treble, got your uh, Andy Fletcher, who we talked about a couple of shows ago mm -hmm. from uh, Depeche mm -hmm. Mode. Um, I did want to mention, it's it's still under Dark Cloud, but it's kind of like hopeful, I would say. As we know, we lost Bob Saget early on in 2022. Yeah. And um, I follow his wife, whose first name escapes me at this point, because I kind of follow her by her Instagram account, which is, I believe, at Eat Travel Rock, I think is the um, the account. Okay. And so, and she has a lot of followers on her own because she's very much, um, like she has her own, you know, she does recipes and all this kind of stuff. So she has lots of followers on her own. Mm -hmm. She posted such a touching post today, uh, or it was yesterday about that. It's been six months since Bob Saget has passed away. Wow. And she mentioned the hardships that she's had to go through to carry on, but that she is carrying on and that she and his daughters are tight, which is mm -hmm. great because they're, they're technically not hers, you know, like they're not, they're her stepkids, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just love the message. So if anyone has a chance, please go check out Eat Travel Rock on Instagram and read the amazing message that she wrote about Bob Saget. And I'm so proud of her because they seem like they were soulmates. And obviously he was ripped from her in such a quick way, you know, no chance to say goodbye or even know that it was coming and then to have to regroup and go on. And she's, you know, I don't think she's old by any stretch. Like she has a, you know, a long way to go. And hopefully mm -hmm. if, if the universe feels like it and she wants it, maybe she'll find another mate as time goes on, but just such a lovely message about Bob and how much she misses him, but that she knows he would want her to carry forward. And that's what she's doing. Well, that is good. I can't take my eyes off this list. I'm looking at uh, Jerry Verdorn. He's a daytime soap actor. Yeah, he was I remember Ross him. on Guiding Light and Clint on One Life to Live, going mm -hmm. even earlier than that. Yeah, so it's uh, it's sad. We are we remain thankful for all the great characters and and art that uh, these people have brought into our lives. Uh, so that's I think the best tribute is that they have uh, they've had impact, and it means mm -hmm. something when we find out that that they're gone. Mm -hmm. So that's the dark cloud. It's okay. Okay, so here's another dark cloud. Uh oh. How many but are you it, bringing? Well, <laughs> I got two hands, so <laughs> it's not a dark cloud really. But when you think of Schindler's List as a movie and a total must see movie, important historically, I think it's important to watch the movie. And I'm obviously not alone in that. Um, they, when they find, ended up showing it on TV, they committed to no commercials. So they had sponsors for the movie but so as to not interrupt the flow of uh of the movie on screen they had sponsors for the movie but they they kept the movie going which is really cool when you think of uh you know televi uh, television acquiring rights to films yeah. Th yeah. they can sell that stuff really really well so they um they paid tribute to the integrity of the film and ray fines was in that movie schindler's list huge and it was a pretty big deal for uh steven spielberg but when it came to actually doing the role to accepting the role um ray finds I, I love the way he described it he says i think there are moments you're lucky to have as an actor when you're asked to be a part of something that feels like it's going to be quite momentous um and he was he said it was a no-brainer that he was delighted to uh to take on the role you guys see that movie back then I did not, but I've seen clips, but now you've re-inspired me to, because when I read the article, I was like, you need to watch this movie. And so it's now really good. I mean, the concept of, of a list of uh, one man's list and how he helped save many people in the circumstances that would have had him getting killed if it was discovered that he was doing that is really quite spectacular. And, you know, we all know someone who has a relative who, who either has a relative or they have one now that was a part of uh, of uh, being in Auschwitz and and dealing with uh, with that horrible time. Uh, interesting side note to uh, Schindler's List that to Steven Spielberg said that he gave the movie to his friend Martin Scorsese to do. 
originally. Yeah, that's crazy. And that, okay. Because he said he wouldn't shy away from the truth or the violence of the story, uh, but that he ended up taking it back because um, he wanted the opportunity to be able to share the work uh, with his kids to be a part of it later in life. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that should be presented as I think in history class. So that's that. So dark cloud in nature, but important when you think of uh, people yeah. looking back on a movie like Schindler's List. Before you launch into Rewind, Sharon, I yep. listened to a podcast from uh, two of the actresses from The L Word, mm -hmm. uh, Kate Medig and Leisha Haley, mm -hmm. and they recently contracted COVID. Oh, so on set, because they're filming the new season of The L Word and season three, I believe it is this turn time around. So they were discussing what they had watched during their quarantine period. Mm -hmm. And Kate Menning, who is uh, in her forties, was talking about how she had all these plans to watch things like current that she was good, you know, like that, that on Netflix that she needed to watch. But I guess because she wasn't feeling well, she needed comfort. So she turned to, she randomly saw the firm come up with Tom Cruise. Oh yeah. And so that got her on a kick and she watched all these nineties, like John Grisham movies. Oh, cool. And then that brought her into a few good men and like a bunch of other movies that were all nineties. And I just thought it was really cool for her to mention that it was you know, she was trying to get over COVID and, and those kind of brought her comfort to just kind of get through those days of, of not feeling well. And I thought that was great. I thought it was so amazing to know that like, yeah, the nineties was a great time for movies and a, and a good time to feel good. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic that we're bringing you dark clouds on this particular nineties <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, happens. Uh, it does happen sure. and it's all good. Uh, and the interesting thing back to Schindler's list, let's keep going back uh, that <laughs> next year, it will be 30 years old. Bananas. 30? Yes, 30. Yep. See, that's when you're, when you find Adam out was, shocking information, it's hard to do the math. Adam was minus one when it came out. Ooh. I'm okay with that. Although yeah. you might have been in mommy's tummy at that point. So, what month of the year was that in? Yeah, because no, because I was, I was born in the beginning of 1994. Yeah. So, so you for sure yeah, would have been happening because it was probably October yeah. or September. It was November. Yeah. You were I was in there. Yeah. Well, there you go. Are you ready for this, you guys? Ready. Uh, well, we're going to do a 90s rewind, and it's going to be great. You know why? Because we're going back to 1995, that's why. Okay. <laughs> when you think of a song, there's actually a number of songs, I think, from our favorite songs list that you can hear the title or read the title and you hear it in your head. And I think for Montel Jordan's biggest hit, This Is How We Do It, <laughs> tends to be you you see it on a, on like a playlist or something and you go this is how we do it <laughs> <laughs> so that was a pretty big deal in 1995 and you guys remember uh blessed union of souls i do remember them uh remember they had that song she likes me for me right yep right that was another song after they had their song i believe remember that like it was like a heartfelt poem song <laughs> And it was a, also a pretty big deal around this time in 1995. We also met Diana King through Shy Guy that summer. Oh, great. That song was played on my station like every 10 minutes. It was that was such a summer song. Like it mm -hmm. has that little 12, 14 second intro and you're like, ah, and you have time to Adam, turn it up. To, you have to Ooh. check that out. Shy so Guy good. by Diana King. Yeah. Okay. Homework, yeah. Adam. You will like the song. You will like it. You will um, like it. The only shy guy I know is in the, you know, Super Mario, the little red and white guy. <laughs> They're called shy guys. This guy's a little more uh, island in his vibe. Yeah. 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 Great, Diana King. She's great. You too had a spot on the Batman Forever soundtrack with Hold Me, Kill Me. Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. See, there's too many words <laughs> and it gets confusing. Uh, that was one of the uh, Batman movies with Michael Keaton in it. It's also on U2's Zuropa album. And uh, one of the groups that were at this year's Glastonbury Festival performing for tens of thousands of people, TLC. Oh, yeah. yeah nice. More in the way of T and C, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they were riding high around this time in the summer of 95, topping the charts with Waterfalls. That's another one. You see waterfalls and you instantly start singing, don't go chasing waterfalls. Yeah. Uh, and that cool video that they did too. Which was, cost like a million bucks, I believe at the time, which was big wow. money, big yeah. money at the time. Gosh, love it. 
Uh, that's your 90s rerun. Rerun. You, that's your 90s rerun. And just a, a, a 90s now moment for uh, the now part of things. You yeah. both have to check out Paul Wolford. He is a uh, like dance producer. He has redone um, Destiny's Child's Bills, Bills, Bills. Ooh. And it is getting okay. lots of support. Adam, you will love it. Okay. Love it. Sharon, I hope you will love it because it does. Actually, you liked Icona Pop and, and Ultra Nate because they had the, the yeah. history part of it. I think you'll like the Bills, Bills, Bills because there's that element too. I love the song, Bills, Bills, Bills. So I hope they don't wreck it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quiz you next week. So you'll let us know. So Paul Wolford, W O O L F O R D, mm-hmm. and uh, Bills, Bills, Bills on it actually no sorry you can i think put that in youtube but i think it's called pay the bills i think that's what they've called it this time around something like that oh okay yeah cool that sounds like a that sounds like amazing homework yeah i like giving you awesome. music homework sharon i like it too cal i <laughs> like it too so we'll wait, we'll wait, go, wait uh, just before we go on the song is called can you pay ah there we are can you pay by paul you know Wilson. what this really says to to me is that kelly just makes things up yeah <laughs> And I'm here to verify it. So it's all good. Fact checker, Adam. Thank you very much. This is Kelly why said, I can't get that little blue like uh, check mark on yeah. Instagram because they're like, that girl is fake news. She is <laughs> making crap up. Yeah. <laughs> it's called bills, 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 or pay the bills or something about you've got a bill, you've got mail. No, it's called check can yourself you before you wreck yourself. What's yeah. it called? Can you pay? <laughs> can you pay? <laughs> okay. That makes sense. uh so there we are at the end of another fun round of 90s now thank you guys for uh for showing up in your little boxes today (laughs) i'm talking to kelly i'm talking to adam thank you sharon (laughs) your box looks amazing thanks uh try to pull it together uh maybe we'll go live again kel yes and uh, we'll get adam in on this one Ooh, i'll try on a live stream yes you just can't have any plans on a saturday night (laughs) yeah Are you at that that stage of your life, Adam? Because we are there. I'm still working (laughs) on Saturday nights. I'm still working. Oh, shoot. Okay, cool. Then we'll check in. Okay. And uh, everybody else, thank you to anybody who spotted our live. Yeah. Uh, We appreciate that. Thanks for being in that night. And uh, (laughs) thank you for listening to 90s Now. Still happening. 